How's it going, everybody? I guess I'm out of breath. It was hard to make it to this. Can y'all hear us okay? Hold on. I know what you need. What do we need? I got you. You bringing me a beer? Oh, you got, oh, I don't know. That'll be bright. Let's see. That's really bright. It kind of helps. Ow. See, the lighting is much better now. It is. Can y'all hear us okay? Just let me know. It looks like we have a few people in here. We got a couple, well, about a minute or so, and we'll get started here. Awesome, thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Brian. All right, well, welcome to another live edition. I guess our whole point of this is to ask each other questions and learn from each other's experiences and stuff like that. I mean, I we're, we're, we do the best we can to try to help with issues as far as you know, but we basically get a sentence. Um, you know, it's hard to troubleshoot based off a couple sentences here in the chat, but we'll do our best. And we don't have to do just troubleshooting. I mean, anything that anybody wants to talk about, we're more than happy to talk That's about. Question about the tools we use to do certain things, we could show you. Yeah, anything. Skinny rims for skinny snow tires. That's a good question. We'll, we'll start at the top. I've actually got. Uh, one of the guys that works for us specializes in tires. I wish he was here. I need to ask him and get back to you on that because we just did a lot this winter um, that he sold. So awesome, guys. We'll just jump right into it. Um, looks like we got uh, the first question from Roger here, and, and we'll try to limit these. You know, like I said, we can't troubleshoot everything based on a couple sentences, but if it looks like it needs to go in depth, what we do is we schedule just one-on-one -on -one meetings where we can... Um, you know, pull your service manual, your serial number and everything. We can look deeper into that. Yeah, but we'll try to stay at like a minute 30 per question. Yeah, we'll do our we best. I just appreciate y'all being here. Um, so Ro Roger has an issue. Roger from Texas. And we're going to read out these questions. So when we go back and look at this live stream, we know what we're talking about. Um, 740 turns on for 20 seconds, turns off, but it'll turn on again. Has a new pump injectors and put new fuel lines on it. So the first thing I would need to know, Rogers, if you have any codes, usually if the machine runs for 20 seconds and shuts off, it's probably a charge pressure issue. I mean, is your belt broke or something like that? Um, if it shuts down, um, if the ECU is shutting it down, you should have a code. So we would need to know if you have a code or not. But I'm thinking that it might be a charge pressure issue. You sure your belt's on and your belt's um, yeah, in good condition. This one here, I can read him. He says, does he have a problem in getting the wrong parts from Bobcat? This is Brian. <clears throat> Even when you enter the serial number, I have an 873. I wonder if I have any in between here. So it, it depends on, there, there, there is, there, there was two generations of the 873. Um, and it, it, it's weird when you're looking at parts on the Bobcat site, you, you do have to pay attention when you're ordering the parts because you'll have the same breakdown but it'll tell you this serial number break versus this serial number break. So if you're not dead on uh, the serial number break or whoever's looking up the parts for you, that, there, that there was a lot issue. of times when I worked at the dealership, they'd give us the wrong parts because the serial number breaks. Yeah. So we had to triple check them. So. so I find that the manuals, the parts manuals are really good. It's the person who's looking up the yep. parts. Yep. Right here we have, oops, we have, 2017 E26 pattern changer is stuck. So tried soaking with penetrating oil and had no effect. Repair or replace. So that that the, the end will come out of the um, the the valve. It, snap ring. Yeah, the, I think it's a snap ring. But I usually replace them. I haven't done one on the E26, but I've done them on some of the larger ones. They're pretty easy to replace. Yeah, they're easy. There is a lot of lines going in there. Just make sure you mark you your take lines. A, you can take a picture of it before you. Um, remove it and they're those they are the hoses that have a clip so you have to take the clip out to pull the hose out and then you have to swap the fittings you can put the clip back in it and push the hose through mm -hmm. yeah i've pulled them apart before but it seems like they kind of get seized in there like the the body itself or um 
I don't remember, but I always end up replacing them. I think that's going to be your best bet, Bill. Thanks for the question. I'm the third owner of a Bobcat 773, which is a C model, I believe. When I enter the serial number on Bobcat's website, it comes up as a 7753. What's the difference between those two? I couldn't tell you. Dang, Mike, I was hoping you were going to answer that one. Man, I, I, I've only seen a handful of the 7753s, but they were the, basically the same one. I used to know this because I used to research the motor machines. And I can't remember, but there is a... at um, On Bobcat.com, you can research the... Um, I'd have to find the right page, but it does have the history of all of them and it shows what the differences are. And I think that might just be a year thing on the 7753 because I think that came out before the 773. So it might just be a, a, a weird serial number break where um, the manuals do do that sometimes. If you notice that you'll type it in um, like that, uh, that excavator we're working on. I think if you type that serial number and it comes up as a 337, but it's actually a 341. Yes, it does. Yeah. yeah so it, it, they have. They just group them together. So so that does happen sometimes. Right here we have, are there any from Douglas Smith, are there any aftermarket sprockets as good as Bobcat? So sprockets, I'm not, I can't really answer that question because I always, on the sprockets, I use genuine Bobcat mostly all the time. Um there are a lot of good aftermarket manufacturers out there. I just can't speak for any of them, uh, to be honest with you, Douglas. Sorry about that. Um, S300 two-speed, 3,000 hours. 300, S300. That's, I mean, people love them machines. From Georgia, Tony Fur. This is Tony Fur from North Carolina. Thanks for the advice on the 883 axle bearings. Replaced all four. Works like new. Not that difficult. Awesome. It's good to hear. Was it easier than the S740 bearings, you think? Yes, most definitely. <laughs> Taylor Richardson, hey, from Georgia. Hey, that's my hometown or my home state, I guess, man. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Ken H says, my S205 becomes kind of noisy and the drive levers will almost vibrate after it's been working hard and, and it's hot. I was wondering if that is in the drive motors or pump. 2,300 hours. Let me get down to that. Uh, we got a special guest, Micah Wood from Jacksonville, Florida, man. Welcome. How do you even find time to even join one of these things, dude? That's that's impressive. Appreciate you being here. Fat Fingers. Oh, 873 is a 773. Comes up as a 773. Wait, did you, do you want to do this S205? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Let me back up to the S205. It becomes noisy and the drive levers will sh vibrate. I think it's hot. Is it in the motors of the pump? It, it, it could really be either or on that. Um, does your oil, check your hydraulic oil, does it become foamy, almost like a milky color? Sometimes on those S205s, especially if it's a manual machine, what happens is the pinnel shaft seals will kind of leak, but they'll actually suck air into mm. them. There's negative pressure in that case sometimes. And um, it might be that you're getting aeration in there. I, check, check your oil and, and just let me know um, if it is... Uh, milky or, or aerated at all. That, that's what I would check. And then there's other places where you can get air into the system, but sometimes people chase and tighten clamps and everything, and it's actually the pinnel shaft seals on some of the motor machines that's pulling air down into them. So How do you even know all this stuff? I read it. I saw it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, whoops. Crankshaft 10. S300 two-speed, 3,000 hours. Skid makes loud noise in two-speed. As tall semi truck tower tires for plowing, drive chains aren't loose. New chain case oil pump is loud, and the sticks fight back more. Okay, if the st if the sticks are fighting back, and that's going to be your valve plates. Ninety nine percent sure your valve plates are just worn in your pump inside the pump. Yeah, and if your valve plates are bad, you're going to need a rotating group too, and that's how it gets. It, it, yeah, it gets expensive because there's just not a good place to get. Um, affordable parts for those so it's, it, it, and sometimes they are rebuildable for sure but sometimes it's better just to get a reman pump if you're not super familiar familiar with um rebuilding those pumps um but yeah i think you've just got worn valve plates if it's fighting back on you and noisy for sure we forgot it. T A W bobcat 337 excavator it is overcharging the battery fried the old battery and put a new battery in it it is charging 17 amps i can get this one i got this one Go for it, man. It is definitely the, um, I'm going to say it's the voltage regulator inside of your alternator is not working. Um, and you can't really just get voltage regulators. 
Um, you just get a new alternator. Yeah, and check check the actual voltage, you know, amperage. I mean, those things can charge, you know, 30, 40 amps, no problem. It just depends on the condition of your battery when it starts to charge. Did you mean 17 volts or 17 amps? Well, yeah, I wonder. It says amps, so... Yeah, I'm wondering if it is charging 17 volts. And yeah, definitely. It's 17 regulate. volts. That's what I guess I thought. In my mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, but but he, he could be measuring current. I'm not sure. So was that? Um, it would be the voltage regulator inside of your alternator. Yeah, Copper Creek. Line. I, Copper Creek, I noticed that, or I recognize that name. That's awesome that you're down there near Micah, man. Right here, Wesley Carter on the T76 oil filter relocation kit. What is the status of that coming from your outfit? <laughs> gotcha <laughs> thanks for asking man um i had a whole order so permacool you know permacool is huge you know they make all kinds of radiators and um transmission coolers and all that stuff they also make the filter head for that i i could redesign this to use a different filter my goal was to use the original bobcat filter and there's not many um, threads where I can get a base and a head that sticks with that Bobcat thread. And I had them ordered, I paid for them. And then Permacool just sent me my money back two months later and said, no, we can't fulfill your order. So I'm going to contact them and see what the problem is while either, either they stop making that and I need to find or source it from somewhere else, um, or, or what happened. So it's that, that's what it is, Wesley. I really appreciate you asking that because that relocation kit's kind of a, special project that's near and dear to my heart and yeah permacool dropped the uh the ball on that for us so i will get you updated or i will put an update i'll post a um just a community post or something to let you know when they are available so hopefully soon okay are there any plans on continuing making episodes to the podcast i really appreciate all the information you guys put out in the community it's very helpful very very helpful yeah appreciate that and i did man i really want to do the, the the podcast more i like these questions and i appreciate that it's a time thing like i i this guy has zero time if you were here like trying to get this dude to work on one thing that engine back there trying to get him to work on one thing at a time is literally impossible it's it's 15 hours a day around here and i just want to go home and spend time with the yep. kids sometimes so yeah we and even on the weekends we're up here working so it, it's a time thing uh, really, but yeah, I maybe when maybe you get more streamlined and more people working, you can work your eight hour days. Yeah, I try to do some by myself, and I'm not good talking to myself. I need a <laughs> guest each time, so oh, crazy. But thanks for asking. I have not given up on it, I just have not had a chance Oops. to um, get back on the podcast. Pedro Vin Vince Benent says, Do you recommend repairing a leak in the final drive motor or better changing it for a new one? The machine is a uh, 2016 Bobcat T550 with 3,500 hours. So on a, a 2016 model, so do you have the, I'd say the F or the T, but it, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about, what, how, how many bolts is in your hub? So normally what I do, Pedro, is, is I tear the motor down and then I determine whether or not it's rebuildable or not. Um, I've got some on the table back here behind us, two of them we tore down that I'm kind of iffy about because the face seals on them, uh, where the face seal O-ring goes, it had a lot of rust and, and kind of pitting in there. I got them cleaned up pretty good. I'm, I, I quoted it both ways to the customer. I said, man, I'll reseal it. I feel good about it, but I can't guarantee it. So that's something you almost have to tear down and see. I mean, you have to be super familiar with it. It, it is easier just to replace it as far as like labor wise. So yeah, it, 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 it if you don't know how to tear it apart, then you can just replace it and i yeah. should put i should have somebody typing in the chat here some of the links cr components Re remember that pedro or write that down cr components out of indiana you can, you can type it right here i can't type and talk at the same time no i'm not as talented as you mike yeah cr components check them out they've got motors pumps seal kits for everything like i said i, I usually like to stick to oem but the seal kits are like a thousand dollars from Bobcat. You know, what I mean, that kind of prices you out of doing your own rebuild. So, um, yeah, check out CR components and compare getting a remanufactured motor from CR components versus getting a seal kit and doing it yourself. If you're if you tear it down and your brake pack is shot, don't don't even try. The brake pack is just too expensive to even worry about doing it yourself. Right here we have. Can you explain Copper Creek Cuts Lawn Care? 
Can you explain? Say that five times fast. Can you explain <laughs> explain the best process for flushing old mi milky hydraulic fluid from the system? Do I have to sacrifice a whole batch of good oil to run a while, mix with the old, and drain and fill again? I've I've had it where somebody had came in and they had watery fluid, and it mm -hmm. really all we could do was we just drained it all out, filled the whole system up, ran everything, drained it all out, filled the whole system until it looked like a good color. Yeah. Change your filters too. Yeah. We had to that's... do it like two or three times. And I, and I recognize that name. I don't, either we've talked before, you've got your own YouTube channel, I think. But um, yeah, thanks for the question. So yes, what you're describing, like Mike said, is probably the best way is, is we, I pump it out through the auxiliary lines. Not everybody agrees mm. with that, um, how I do it. But again, that's why it's called how I did it, not how they're supposed to be I, doing I, it. I sucked it out from the tank. <laughs> yeah. That's what I did. So if you suck it out of the tank, you can only get what, like two gallons out of the tank. All right. But if you pump it out, you that's get about everything. Yeah, you get most everything. You get about 30, 40% more oil out doing it that way. You just got to make sure you shut your machine down right when it starts to uh, bubble and spit out. Yeah, it's called um, pseudo cap. It's not cavitation as, as what we're used to damaging pumps. It's a pseudo cavitation, it's, it's an aeration. Uh, it's different than a full-on cavitation um, that, that causes damage, but you just got to be careful when you do it that way. So, yeah, that can get expensive. And also, I don't, I don't want to get too much into that because I haven't built this yet, but there is a guy, Steel Camel. He's out of Florida. Uh, if you look up Steel Camel website, he's got probably one of the best water-separating filters on is, is that I've ever seen, that the material and the stuff that they use in their canisters is really impressive. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to build a filtration system that we could, you hook could pump in. through the auxiliaries. Yeah, we just turn on the we just hook it up to the auxiliaries. We just turn them on and let it go through this filter, it. Yep. and it pulls the water out of the oil. You know, it, it it's kind of an oil water separator, but it, it actually absorbs the water into the filter housing. and have little gauges on them. So there's different ways of going about that. But the easy answer is just keep pumping it out a couple of times. It unfortunately, and, and really make sure sucks. you find the source of where the water is coming in. This one says hydraulic oil is great. It's not bad. Just wondering if something is leaning to speed AC. Oh, this one. He was asking what Ken asked about the noisy. The drivers will vibrate. The levers will vibrate. The 205, the aeration one you're talking about through the. It's great. No, it's not bad. Just wondering if something is looming two speed ACS. Seen a lot of two speeds, no problem. Yeah, it's what was it? The sticks are vibrating. You said that the, there's a 205, so it's sucking air through the pintle shaft. Seals. Oh, it could be, but he says his oil looks good. Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes worn dry motors cause that. It depends on the serial number, see how which it is a two speed, so that should be a gerotor. So sometimes if the gerotors wore out, that'll cause um, those type of issues as well. Uh, yeah, I would almost tear down the drive motors before I did the pumps on that one on the 205. Okay, we have right here. Is there any tips for? Oh, is there any tips for cleaning out, clearing out the ins, the inside of the Bobcat hydraulic area? Are there else, any useful scoops or tools to get out the gunk? A pressure washer inside of the hydraulic area? Do you mean the tank or the chain case? I think he's talking about on either side of the chain case and how they build up so much. Oh, yeah. You can pressure wash inside of there. Just be careful. We do it all the time. Like at the dealership, we just pressure. You take the plates off the side and you can lift the cab up and spray it out the side. You can use just a regular hose too. Just need to be careful how close you get with the pressure washer to lines and mm -hmm. stuff. So, yeah, depending on what your model is, you want to find out where your drain holes are. All the cases... The, 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 uh, the cases, the hydraulic ears do have drain holes in them. The older machines, they just had holes in the back, kind of behind the axles um, that would just drain out. Some of the newer machines got actual plates you can take off. Take off. But yeah, we, we take off the plates or we find the drain holes and we just, yeah, whatever plates you can remove off the sides if you have a rubber tire machine and just pressure wash the heck out of it. This one, crankshaft, what was his question before? Oh, that's the that's the valve plate. You were you were saying his valve plate because his um, yeah, sticks yeah. were fighting. So any harm, keep using it. Um, not really. Most, I mean, people will just continue to run it until it just gets to a point. Up. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I worked on a uh, that five 
95 I went to the other day. I couldn't find his spirit. It had too much back pressure, and I, I told him the same thing. And unfortunately, he just bought it. And so he's just going to run it. I mean, and that's what I told him. I said, run it till you can't stand it anymore. Make I mean, enough money to buy a new pump. Yeah. Um, the valve plates are just worn. Hopefully, we don't have any damage to any of the pistons or anything because if it does actually come apart, then we're going to send metal all through your motors and everything else. So. Yeah, they just get worn. They get scratches in them, and then they it's, you just start yeah. getting feedback. You don't want to have outside. a catastrophic failure. Yeah, so that's kind of a it's iffy. Yeah, at your own risk type thing, but more than likely, I don't think it's going to explode overnight or anything on you. I think it'll be okay. Um, this is he was saying he meant seventeen volts. Oh, seventeen volts. So it's yeah. a voltage regulator. Yeah, I'd change that alternator. Ch change the alternator. Another comment about the skinny rims. My Bobcat is an S seven seventy bigger inner hub. So. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask. We can ask Laza right now, or yeah, just write. It we'll down write it down, I'll, and I'll put a post up here in the next day or so. Um, we do our own tracks and tires, but those skinny tire and rims, the snow tires, they they are incredible, and we we just don't carry those. We order them in from somewhere. I'll, I'll find out for you though. We'll do a little poster. Um, you know what? Any anyone that wants to ask a question or a follow up, I'm gonna put my um, email address in here. And just, just remind me your question, and I'll try to get an answer back to you. All right, what else, Mike? You can't type and, type and talk at the same time. No, I so cannot. I, I literally can't even type and not talk I'm, at the I'm same time. I'm waiting for you to finish typing. Okay. How was it starting up your own business, specifically with purchasing service truck along the same line of thought? Can we hope to get a shop, toolbox, and truck tour? <laughs> awesome yes. man i've, I've kind of wanted to do that man but ever since i changed out of my big truck into my little one i haven't even organized it like i want to yet um how was it starting up your own business it was stressful man and i and i hated to do it There's still a lot stressful of, it is still stressful but i went from literally just me to two weeks later i couldn't tolerate it anymore i called mike and then <laughs> mike came to work for me and now our company has um 11 employees now we were 12 uh, one guy just moved on to different things yeah so we're up to 11 employees now in seven months so yeah we, we've grown a little bit in seven months but i wanted to do everything by myself but you can't do everything by yourself so yeah Still try um neither one of us really we, we have shop toolboxes but yeah so i would love to do all I would have loved are... to done a shop or a toolbox tour before everything moved to the truck. Right now, it's kind of a disaster. I can still do a tour, but uh, yeah, we should do that. Though. My toolbox, uh, it looked good when I had all my tools, and I tell you what, <clears throat> snap on. Yep, I like to drink diesel too. You are not the only one. I wonder if he's referring back to your video, video where yeah. where Ethan drank. Yeah. Um, it's good that, for you. Yeah, that 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 was Gatorade on the bumper of the truck, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> If anybody remembers that video, that was when he was younger. That was when... Trying to replace my T590 top oil cover gasket. Do you have any vids on that? Top oil cover gasket. Um, What's that? Probably the valve cover. The to so take the injector lines off and the that, top that oil cover. That's it. Um, yeah, senior dot. If oh, is are you talking about the one that faces the injector lines, or are you talking about the the entire? There's, or is he talking about? There's the one that faces the injector lines. You take that one off to take the injectors out, or are you talking about the whole big one? Because that, either way, it's not very difficult um, to take. You just take the injector lines off. Um, technically, they're one-time use, mm -hmm. so you technically you're supposed to buy new ones, um, and then you just take that their little um, eight millimeter bolts. I think right on those. I think so. Yeah, one well, yeah. eight millimeter head. Yeah, then you six take, mil then you, Yeah, you take the things off. You take that little cover off. Then what you got to do is take the injectors out. So you'll loosen the injector hold downs, pull them out, then you can pop the injectors out. Make sure you put them back in the right spot, and you have to unplug them, take the return line off, and then it'll come off. There's always a lot of dirt in the back, uh, in between the. See, there's a heat shield, in yeah. between. There's always a ton of dirt. Good so you have to be careful with that. Out. Um, Sue has a bobcat loose in our neighborhood and she's worried about her chihuahua. Any tips on how to trap it? Shoot it. No, so for our <laughs> um, for our bobcats, they're attracted to diesel fuel and hydraulic oil. 
So I would put some of that out and they'll eventually just die on site. You just have to call someone out there to pick it up. You you can find the bobcat. There's usually oil leaks on the floor wherever they go. <laughs> so no, that's, that's not them. true. That's, that's not them. true. <clears throat> um, best route to getting the bobcat service tool, the remote start the remote start are you talking about the remote start box dealers hesitant to sell really yeah they don't want to sell you the rst because you can't do anything with it without the software and you can't oh, get the software okay. unfortunately they, they'll they'll sell you the, the box number one you don't go in there and ask for a box you just go in there and tell them to order you this part number and they'll order you the box and then you got to get the software but they mm. won't they won't they won't give you the software um, unfortunately so you're gonna have to do something aftermarket and it looks like, you know, at your own risk, you know, there, there are aftermarket people that sell um, the, the RST with, I think they got up to like 90.01 software, which is fairly recent, I think up to about last year. Um, some of them are like 89.16 software, still does most everything you, you want, except for kind of the R series. Unless you have an R series yeah. and you need a brand new update or something. So, so it's hard to get the updated stuff. Um, but there's really not a huge need for the Bobcat analyzer. Unless you work on a lot of them. You, you would have to work on a lot of them. And or see you a lot get of like issues. engine code if you have to do anything engine wise, I guess. Yeah, I would I would be more interested in the engine software because the Bobcat analyzer does not do the engine. It just you can program like <clears throat> computers, you can update software, you can uh, turn on um features and stuff like or not what uh what would you call it um, um like to, if, to change options options yeah, yeah options. you can change options but i mean uh, it, it's good for looking at codes and when codes happened you know but um or it also has like diagnostic screens that show you like but if if you're not really doing that kind of stuff like electrical stuff it's not really useful man super chat thank you micah thank awesome. you so much man i appreciate that what do you use to extract broken glow plugs? Luck. <clears throat> yeah. Where'd um, it go? Right there. It, it depends on the breakage. I mean, what, uh, where did it break at? I mean, years ago, I used to, I broke several glow plugs. You kind of learn how not to break them. <laughs> now, now you can kind of feel um, if you do have a lot of carbon build up on it and they feel like they're going to break in there, sometimes you just have to pull the head, man. If, if it's just the tip broke off in there, put a couple rags over it, turn the engine over and just hope compression blows it out. Um, it, it depends on kind of where it broke. You know, if it's just the tip and yeah, you just hope compression blows it out at that point, just spray the them down, lube them up. Yeah. Nope, just just the, tip. the tip. So it, yeah, it depends on where it broke. Um, hi Brady and Mike. Still working on my A300 drive pump problems. Working on removing the engine and pumps currently. Also found oil in the coolant. I mean, you got a milkshake maker. Jeez. What you got? Justin, sorry to that hear sucks, that, man. man. Yeah. It's oh, a lot of work. Just easy. I guess it would be pretty, it'd be really easy to do the head gasket while the engine's out. So. Yeah, for sure. You got to find out where that water is coming from. Yep. Um, A300. So that we'll have an engine oil cooler. So don't. Don't forget the engine oil cooler is a possibility of that happening. So. Probably easier to check that first. Yep. How do repair and replace the bushings located on the end of the boom where the bucket pin goes through? G31E. How to remove and replace the bushings. So on those, I usually just torch mount. I just cut a groove right through the bushing. Uh, the bushings on those do come to a, a hard stop. You got one on each side. Um, and usually I'll just take a torch and I'll just cut a little groove in them. It, it's kind of hard. I mean, that kind of goes for any other bushings that are stuck. If, if it's too hard and you're not fighting it, you can always just, yeah. but you just got to be real careful not to hit the. Yeah, you don't want to cut into mm -hmm. the boss itself. Um, so once you, once you cut a groove and then you cut another groove, it should just come right out. Yep. And y'all. Like, like I said, we're just kind of troubleshooting off a couple sentences here. Someone, some of you might know more than we do, so yeah. don't, don't hesitate to, to yeah. throw in what you think might be the another. Yeah, awesome, man. Thanks for that. Thank you so much for the nineteen ninety nine. You guys are awesome. Um, we got right here. Where can I get a, a replacement O-ring that goes inside the front of the flat face quick connect coupler on the front of a T one ninety? 
it is wider than the normal o rings. So what? Th those are not meant to be rebuildable or resealable. But if you want to try, you're gonna have to find one of your hydraulic shops. We have a seal replacement company here. Hydropack, Hydra or Hydro? I don't know. Hydro couldn't tell you. H y d r o p a k seals. Um, they're they're just local to us, and that's where you get those type of seals from. Someone like that, but I'm not aware of anyone who's selling a seal kit for that because they're not meant to be rebuildable. They're they're um, just supposed to be replaced. I know they're kind of expensive, and there's a lot of aftermarket options on that as well. But uh, you're gonna have to find a specialized seal place, or it, it's probably just gonna be easier just to replace just it. Just replace it. Um, I'm so bad at Thanks, Ken. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. I perfect uh, figure oil cooler or head gasket. Yep. Mm -hmm. Where can I buy the final drive motor that is cheaper than at the dealership? Um, CR components, right? Yeah, CR components. We put that We've somewhere in, it's the, in chat. the chat. CR components. Um, maybe Friday parts. Maybe. Yeah, Friday part. It, yeah, it depends on the serial number. You can, um, if you can somehow find the part number um, to your motor, you can yeah, just look that up and it'll pull it up. You know, there, there's a lot of Google. dealers and, and I don't want to throw or say anything negative about any company, but there is a lot of aftermarket rebuilders out there and there, a lot of them are good. Um, I would just search for that, but CR components is where I would start. Look right here. Crankshaft 10 says, oh, sorry, we're skipping one. John Smith. I got a bobcat in my shop leaking hydraulic fluid out of the axles. Looks like, what could that even be? You have, um, we don't even have it here. We just did that. But basically you have a, your axle and then there's the hub at the end. There's the bolts at the end of the hub. And I just did this for the first time. And you take the bolt off or you loosen the bolt. And then you have to use two bottle jacks to pop the hub off because it's on there super, super tight. And you have a seal right there, just a like a bear, wheel bearing seal. Yeah, it's a wheel bearing seal. And you, it says in the service manual, you put two screws in and a slide hammer to pull it out or whatever. So I've got, I know at least two good videos on a full rebuild on those um, those axles. I mean, if your seal's leaking, more than likely your bearings are probably worn out, if not bad. Um, so I would refer you to just kind of search through our YouTube and. I've got a real early one that I did a couple years ago that shows how to pop those hubs. And I've also got another full rebuild on it that shows how those seals and everything work. So those are pretty good. Actually, those, yeah, those videos will take you from start to finish, help you out with that. What was he saying about dealership? Or? Um, no, we already got that one. Where can I buy the final? Oh, that's right. Okay. Kirk Niles, A1 Tire in Minnesota, sells them at $1,750 pre tax. I assume you're talking about the skinny tires for your A300. Yeah, crankshaft 10. So. It says it right here, Kirk Niles, A1 Tire in Minnesota. Check them out. Yeah, Minnesota would be Minnesota. a good place to source those for real because yep. they, they're always dealing with it. Oh, that, that was Kevin that did the Thank you for the for 1999. The Thank you, Kevin. Check the fridge. It might be getting low. <laughs> 2010 Bobcat S185 machine, bought, used, always been a weak right side drive, overpowered when I do anything on the left stick. Oh, so the left is stronger than the right, identical to the crankshaft valve plate issue. Machine by you've always been weak on the right. So his side. left side is stronger than the right side, and when he's trying to go forward, it. Yeah. So are you are you getting full travel? Is, is it weak in reverse as well? That that would be my question. Are you getting full travel out of the stick? Um, I did a video on a T five ninety five, although it's a track machine. I basically show how I test the pressures on the pump. We just dead hit it right into a gauge. So on an issue like that, if I'm trying to determine if it's a pump or a motor, I pressure test the pumps on both ports. And, and I do have a video. What was that? It was fairly recent, just a few months ago. Remember where we deadheaded the gauges on the, that was a T595. We put two drive motors yes. on. Yep. Yeah. No so we, about, yep. There's a video on that. I, I show how to make the adapter for the pump. And um, the hydrostatic pump is what he's talking about. The hydrostatic pump. Yeah. So we would just test both those. So what you do is you just put plumb a gauge into it. We run it full bore and see if you're getting that 5,000 psi you need. Yep. Um, it, it's pressure, not necessarily flow. If, I mean, like it could be either or. But if you make pressure, more than likely you're going to have flow. And so that that's how I determine. So I do have a video that I show how I did that. 
Grant, thanks for the question. Loris, greetings from across the ocean from Latvia. That's awesome. Latvia. Latvia. That makes you wonder why there's more. Anyways, <laughs> nice. Nice to watch the work of a knowledgeable mechanic. Good luck. Thank you so much, man. You are awesome. He must be talking about you. Oh, I don't know about that. I haven't even answered a single question. Yeah, you haven't. I use a washing tip for the torch to do the bushing. Oh, Hydra Pack seals. Hydra Thank, Pack. Thanks, Marty. Thank you, Marty. It's weird to say your name. <laughs> thanks, babe. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. A washing tip? What is a washing tip? So a washing tip, yeah. So like a washing tip for your torch. Sometimes it looks like a regular torch bit, but it kind of comes off at an angle. And it's called washing, yeah. So, um, and and that might be a little bit better option. I have not tried a washing tip on the bushings. I do have a couple of those tips. I need to try that. But usually, I do it to blow out uh, welds on when we're doing like um, bosses on the end of the arms and stuff. I'll use a washing tip. I haven't tried one, but yeah, good idea. Uh, just Google washing tip, and and you'll see what that is. Okay. Watching from Scotland, great channel. Looks like you have a great team. Did you end up opening your own shop after you left Bobcat? Yeah, we did. We, we got two service trucks now. We've got 6,000 square foot shop that we're working out of and went from literally me six months ago by myself to, uh, like we said earlier, we're up to 11 employees now. We've got a sales team. We've got a full rental department and everything. So that's it right there. We've grown a lot. Thanks. Thanks for asking. Um, yeah. And yeah, we could go deeper into that. But yep. And we're extremely busy here, too. I have a ooh, Subaru Impreza 2008. Whoa. Problem is, it was driving normally after that. The speed get lower and low RPM. When I park, the RPM get lower now. When I try to run, when it's clacking, it doesn't start. I have no idea. I'm not familiar with the. <laughs> every Subaru that I've ever worked on was the timing set. Um, you know, you've got that boxer style engine, so you've got a. Uh, the, the, the timing belt literally timing goes belt. all the way across yeah. the front of the engine. That's 90% of a Subaru's problems is <laughs> the, from my experience. Um, I, but we don't work on Subarus, but everyone I've worked on has been a timing issue. So maybe look into that. There's a lot of YouTube channels. Everyone shows how to do that, but it sounds like it might be something in there. Hi from, Hi Tulsa. from Tulsa. Tulsa. Bible belt. Oh, am I losing my... Nope, that's it. We're all the way down. Whew. I use those videos to rebuild my seals. Next, I'm going to tackle the timing belt. Oh, for his machine. Timing belt for the Deutz. It must be on. Huh? Deutz, yeah. Deutz, the Deutz. Deutz. That's what the guy calls it on um, that mm -hmm. guy from TikTok. It's Dave. Dave's auto. He all says right. Deutz. Hey, guys, I used to work at a Bobcat dealer and loved the machines. Now I work at a Case Tech Kuchi dealer. I tell you what, I miss working on those Bobcats. These other machines are junk. I couldn't agree with you more, Man, dude. That's that's what I try to tell people. I've been doing this for 25, 6, almost 27 years. I've worked on everything. Everyone complains about working on Bobcats, but I've worked on everything, and I promise you. <laughs> but once you understand it, I, I, I would, yeah, that, that's so. I've worked for, well, how long have I worked here? Seven months, maybe? Yeah. And I've so. worked on... I used to only work on Bobcats. Now I've worked on everything. And in that little bit of time of working on other stuff, Bobcats is definitely the easiest. It, it really, and that's not just being biased. That's anyway, just easy. Maybe it is being biased. I've actually never worked on a Taku, Takuchi. Takuchi. We used to work on them a lot in Georgia. They were based out of Swanee, Georgia. There. But they said, people said that they're really good machines. Yeah. We actually got one in our rental fleet. Wow. I've never seen it. <laughs> so I heard it's in our rental fleet. How are you got that E45 running bad? And, oh, I remember you, Eli. I'm no happy about what happened. The mechanic from Bobcat did my injector. I think there's a problem. I, I, yeah, probably. I don't, I don't remember what we were talking about last time. It seemed like you had, had just kept having more and more problems even yep. after a new set injector. So it probably had a, another bad injector. Um, so Russ bought a, what, 650? Oh. Light burn. A light burn? Try and start the. Oh, it burned? Oh, okay, yeah. They tried to start the machine to see the extent of the damage. The engine harness is toast. I bought a 20. No, yeah. with, without, without. Is there any way to try to start this machine to see the extent of the dump? You, you can't. If the engine without. harness is toast, dude, there's no way. Nope. Nothing's going to happen. No. Nope. 
Yeah, you've got to have a good engine harness and ECU. And that's the only you cannot start that engine without. You can try and you can crank it over, I yeah. guess. But you could crank it over with starting fluid, but that's like when you put ether into one of these engines, that's a big no no. It's yep. like hitting the piston with the sledgehammer. That's the worst thing you can do. Try to do something. But if you want to see if it wanted to turn over, spray a little bit in there and see if it'll actually run on that. <laughs> um that, that'll tell you if you had good compression or not. But but you cannot, the injectors will not fire without a good harness. and Because um, they're electronically Yeah, operated. all that information going through the ECU, unfortunately. What kind of spanner wrench do you guys use to rebuild cylinders? I have yet to find a good one. All right, well, we'll get everything. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did we ask him? If, uh, spanner to get it off. I use pipe wrench to eat the heads up. Yeah, so I'll show you. We got a couple. All right, so we've, we've got we've Brady's got a favorite couple and good we've got tools. my favorite. And I used Brady's favorite today. And it was terrible, and I used my favorite. It was very good. They don't. It's very good. It doesn't always work. Cylinders have really fought us uh, the last For some reason, few cylinders weeks have here. really fought us. Um, so I started out with a Toyota timing tool. I oh, really like that. that. I still use that. Where is it? I'm not sure. It should be back there. But oh, he'll bring right those here. up, and we'll take a look at those. Um but yeah, so I don't like using pipe wrench or nipex, but sometimes sometimes you have to. You have to. And today we had to. I mean, none of our tools would work, and it's just it's kind of an anomaly that the cylinders or the heads are that tight. But sometimes you have to. But like you said, it it, it kind of it does not look very professional when okay. you do that. Okay. So this is Brady's favorite tool. I think it's awesome. So you see, for Amazon. Bobcats, we have these holes that they go into to loosen. And so this is off Amazon. You hit it with the hammer to get it to loosen. And it's nice for like when they're loose. But in my experience, when they're when they're just a little tight at all, it doesn't do anything. This is the one that I, this one is Brady's, but this is the one that I like. Mike likes that. I'd you never stick buy your, another one. <laughs> you stick your them. half yeah. inch uh, breaker bar in here and you stick that in the same holes and do the same thing. And then here's the Toyota cam tool spanner wrench just comes in a little kit it's kind of the same thing you got the little holes there yeah. and these will come out the tips will come out and you can change the sizes but and that one kind of flexes a little bit when you put a lot of torque on it yeah. you got to know how to make sure you torque on that one the problem the problem with the bobcat style cylinders is if it gets a little a little tight at all the heads are aluminum and they just start to round out and you can't stick these back in they don't work once it rounds out, yeah. so then you have to pull out a pipe wrench. So we try all three of these before we go to we the pipe wrench. We always try that before we do the pipe wrench. <laughs> but like I said, sometimes you can't get away from it. Um, has a all S850 right. run for a while, then locks up, won't move forward, reverse controls, won't either. I'll check on this. So uh, Roger on the S850, it's got to be coding, man. I say that. I've, I've had one machine in my lifetime that would lock up and would never code, and I fought that thing for months and months and months. And um, never did come up with a good answer on it, but you should be getting a code if it locks up. Um, you know, you can check your codes depending on if you don't have a deluxe panel, you press and hold the light button, right? It'll say mm -hmm. hold for codes or, yeah. you know, or you hit the information button on an 850. You probably got an, an M series. It's a, it's 850. So yeah, it'll, you, there's an I. I, yeah. So you press that and, and roll you just through. click it and it'll yeah, tell you. It, you should have a code, but if not. And you know, there's in that corner in that on the left panel, there's the... It, I think if it shuts off, it'll show the blinking engine or the blinking uh, yeah. exclamation point. That's show you have a code. Diesel yep. mate from over school. I, he works for JCB. Man, you know, gosh, I wish I could talk to you. Yes, offline. we need your we need your help. JCB will not share any information. No schematics. Nothing. They treat us like I don't know. I don't. I would not buy a. I would not buy a JCB from the way they treat people out here. Um. They, but it's the most. It's there's the most, no help. It's the most popular equipment in the brand in the world. I guess that's what no is the most on. JCBs. <laughs> yeah, um, that's, I, I thought yeah. We I work on. Know. We just can't get any information for them. There's no support online. There's no information. There's no YouTube channels. There's nothing out there. Um, unfortunately, awesome sauce. Someone's in trouble. <laughs> oh, never mind. It's, the mechanic did Captain before Cancer. how he installed the ejector grab car grease wrap around each of the injection i mean a lot so when you install the injectors eli um what i do is you use a little bit of grease to put the copper on the 
um, around the, you don't touch the tip with the grease, but you use it to put the copper on the injector. And then you use grease around the O-ring so you can pop it in. So yeah, you do put grease on the O-ring. I wouldn't, I don't put a lot. So that's weird if you put a whole bunch, but you put a little on the O-ring that's on the injector and then a little on the copper at the bottom and you pop it in. So it's weird if you put a lot. Yeah. Brian Sutherland has a 2019 T650 gets M. It, that should be 0509 when warmed up and at idle, but code goes away when idled up. So that is low charge pressure. So how do it, you know this by the top of your head? YouTube. No. Um, no, I was looking it up while you were looking at it. No. <laughs> cheated. I uh -huh. cheated. I did. I you knew um, the top of your head. So it sounds like either. So either, no, number one, you've either got a bad charge pump is going out. You're not building charge pressure. You could have a charge pressure relief valve that is found in your hydrostat. Um, may not be maintaining pressure. Sometimes those get weak and we have to shim them up. Um, but you're going to have to test the charge pump. And the only way to do that is a direct pump test, so to speak. We would have to um, um, tee in, you know, before your fan or something. There, there's different ways to check charge pressure, but you're going to have to check that. So what happens is at idle, you're not, you don't have enough RPM and not enough flow through there. But when you, when you, uh, your RPMs come up, then you're turning your pump faster and then you can maintain charge pressure. So either a bad pump or something's leaking bad. If we have a bad drive motor, even a bad hydrostat, what happens is you're leaking more charge pressure, more oil than it can produce that charge pump itself. I think they're only like 11 GPM. So we would have to start by checking uh, the charge pump flow and pressure on that. And there is a, a procedure for that. T320, the cooling fan is contacting the shroud. Yeah, that's, it, it's, a, it's just replacing the shroud. What's happened is it's sagging in there. That's real common for those old machines. Um, and sometimes it only contacts it, like when you turn the machine off and it idles down, then everything just kind of drops back into place and you hear it. Rah, 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 rah. I'm not going to do that noise again. That would cost you a nickel. But yeah, it's just, it's sagging. And but there, there was a shim kit. I'd have to look it up. But I don't think many people were having luck with that shim kit. Um, it wasn't really helping anything because of the warpage. Um, it's just an old shroud, not plastic, just kind of warps and, and changes in there. So replacing it, if you can find it, it's going to be your best bet on that. Um, swash plate codes. Is there any way to adjust the swash plate sensor or replace it without pulling the motor? Um, yes. You you can replace the swash plate sensors. Um, it's not easy. Sucks. Yeah, it does suck. You you have to pull your engine mounts. I, I got big hands. Mike can do it easier than I can, but you have to pull your motor mounts, and you can lift the. Um, you pick it up with the pry bar. You pick up basically the engine and pump. Yeah, you just together you just lift it up. You, you pick know. it up, and then I stick blocks of wood in there, and then you pick it up some more and hammer some more blocks of wood in there but it's it's yeah so yes it can be done um you know I've, I've i think i've did a video on that that majority of the time it is not the sensor you're going to have an issue inside um the pump itself whether it's that plastic bushing or Which the swash plate mean? itself so i'm right here at dan now so okay you got this one right here the yeah swash plate sensor. Okay. About, yeah. Mm -hmm. s130 tilt pedal sticks sometimes what's the fix for this but well, depends on where it's sticking. If it's the pedal itself, if there's a lot of rust and stuff down there, I'd replace the the pedal. Um, check out all skid steers is where I've got my pedals from. Um, they come as a complete assembly. You've got bushings and linkage in there. So it, let's see, your tilt should be a straight shot back to the valve, right? The lift is the one that comes tilt, across. Yeah, tilt so yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I would replace the pedal. It's just two 916 bolts or, or uh, use 916 socket. You go right through the middle of the pedal, and it's got carriage bolts on the bottom, and you just back those out, and that whole pedal will come off. And um, I, I would just replace it if it's rusty and everything, if you're, if you're sure it's the pedal. Right here, Gary Wade. Any idea why 2011 E50 with the Kubota engine has a surge or, or at part throttle? It is improved with the fuel filter change. Runs fine wide open but at, and high idle, but surges in the mid-range surges 
I, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know on that surges. It depends on the surge. Um, I had one doing that. Let's see. You changed the filter. What it was, it was we had a piece of garbage in the pickup tube, uh, in that 90 degree that was coming out of the tank. Um, but you're saying run fine wide open, so that doesn't make sense. Why it surges at mid throttle? Let me think on that one for a minute. It's weird that it idles fine, but at high idle. So yeah, let me think about that one for a minute. Um, I'll write that down. Not sure unless that's a governor issue or something. A twenty E fifty. Yeah, that's just mechanical injection. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, let me think on that one a little bit. He says hi, good night. Have S six hundred two with code M one one M one two two, which is uh, C bar sensor out of range low. Okay, so S six fifty out of range low. Is there is there a, anything about five volt reference on that? Or <clears throat> here's the deal: on some of them, it. on some of them earlier S six fifties, a lot of people the first thing they're going to do is you're going to replace the C bar sensor. But we have to see what your incoming voltage is on that. I've got a video where I said asking help for the internet. I'm not good at titling my videos, but I show exactly how to plug into that and test um, what what voltage you've got going into that C bar sensor. So I would watch that video, and that'll make more um, make more sense um, on how those work. But we need to test the incoming voltage. What exactly the code say? It was just out of out, out of range, range low. low. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, either it's not getting good incoming bird. So it could be in the wiring. It could be the sensor. But a lot of times, if you have another code that says anything about five volt reference, it's going to be your gateway controller on mm. that machine. Um, so if you're chasing everything, nothing's making sense. It's probably a failure inside the controller. And I see that a lot on those machines. Right here we have, is there money to be made flipping equipment, buying skid steers, excavators, dozers, I need some work getting them running well, cleaning them up, selling for profit. Absolutely, there is. That's how I built this business was at nights and weekends. But here's the thing is you've got to know the equipment. You, you can't just be, you know, not know anything about diesels or the piece of equipment you're looking at. Go buy one. You have to understand it. You got to know the risk involved. You got to know what to look for. You got to know how things feel because it can burn you real quick. So you got to know how the machine operates. You know, you got to know the ins and outs of it, and you've got to know the market. What will the market bear? It's not how much you think you can get for it, how much are they actually selling for? And since I knew Bobcat equipment very well, um, you know, I could feel it and just look at it and all that. And um, gosh, I was doing probably 10, 15 machines a year just at nights on the sides and weekends. And um, yeah, we made. Uh, very good profits on that. Um, but again, you've got to know what you're doing because if you, if you buy a machine and someone tells you it's, uh, what would they say? Oh, it's just got a, a fuel issue or, a, or there's you some crap a bad, in the you tank. Got a bad cylinder. Yeah. Then you find out it's yeah. something else. You, you, you've got to know what you're looking for and you've got to know what you're buying the machine for the risk involved. What's the worst case is going to, I bought, well, you can't see it, but there's a machine back here in the corner. We're building the, in, the, the engine nickname that we're building. Is, the nickname is Old Smokey. Smokey came in on two cylinders. I bought it for 3000 knowing that I was probably going to have to put an engine in it. Reman engines are expensive, so that's why I'm rebuilding the engine. That engine video we just did is for that 773. I'm going to have about another three grand in um, the engine, not including labor and everything. And so, yeah, we're going to do pretty good on that machine. So, absolutely don't. If, if that's something you want to do, uh, research it, learn it, and do it, man. I I would highly recommend. What do you guys think about Bobcat being going to a rent as you go options? In other words, they build a fully loaded machine and then you have the dealer turn on the options you want to rent. That's weird. What do you guys think about Bobcat going to a rent as you go? What does that mean? Rent as you go options. So it's they're saying you rent the options. Oh, rent them. Yeah, so they Only build they them. build a machine with everything installed, but they turn off the options, and you can rent them. I think is that what you're saying? I that's, think so. So on the new machines, they got, yeah. So a, a lot of machines will come with everything and like high flow, two speed, and all that, but you have to buy those options and turn them on. 
So I think you're asking is what if Bobcat, let's just say you needed high flow for a project, you could rent that option. They would have to come out with a, a laptop and turn, just it, turn on it on and turn it on for one you. button click. Yeah, it could be like, okay, we'll turn it on for 30 days or something. That's a, that's an interesting concept. I've never even thought of that. Then you could um, just be like, all right, who has a, I'll pay you a hundred bucks to come out here and turn it on yeah, for me for free. Yeah. You know, and, Southern bush riders. It message attractive. Well, I know, but do you think that's what kind of bush you think that is? You think, you think, you think <laughs> that's, that's why a, you, you think that's like a holly bush or something, or is that? Yeah. A, no, I know that guy. Hey, oh. thanks for being here, man. Linkage moves freely to the pedal. That's the foot pedal one. So yeah, you just replace the pedal. So it, it sounds like it's the pedal itself. Twenty twenty T seven forty twenty five hundred hours won't start. Lots of black smoke coming from exhaust. I'm thinking turbo. Well, if it's not going to start. Um, the turbo doesn't, isn't really going to help it start. Um, I'm going to lean towards injectors. You can, um, I don't know. What do you think? It's not starting. I think it's, injectors. well, yeah, you, you got to start with that leak back. Um, if you're getting a lot of black smoke, I mean, it could, okay, well, let's go back to this one that we already did a while back where the turbo was bad and it was locked up and there wasn't enough airflow through it. So, okay. yeah, when, when you're, so what it was is a blockage of airflow, you know, you're, when you're starting an engine, you're actually going to have um, negative pressure. The turbo isn't up to speed yet, so it's not creating boosts. You'll actually see your map come down. Yeah, that's normal. That's but, um, you know, if it won't start, you know, just number one, make sure your your um, the turbo will spin freely. If it's locked up, sometimes you just can't get enough air uh, into the engine to start it. But you're going to need to uh, do a leak back on that the, 740 the, as the, well. The first thing I would do always when something wouldn't start was do a static test, a leak back test on the injectors before anything. Because mm -hmm. um, in my experience, not starting means you have worn out injectors. So um, it says, hey, guys, what series of loaders do the both of you feel where are the best? I enjoy my G-series. Keep up the excellent work. He likes the old uh, mechanical stuff that I don't know how to work on, and I like the R series, just because that's all I ever worked on. Yeah, um, that's all in who you ask. I like the old machines because they're kind of vintage to me. Like I've got my 763 back here. I would never sell. Um, it's an F series, but you sell it for a hundred grand. I'm not sure that I would. No way. Oh no, man! Look at that. You can't replace that. Maybe I would. You yeah. could replace that with a hundred grand. Yeah, you could buy three of those. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know they're all good machines. It depends on applications. Like if I had to run one all day long, hell, I would want an R series. R series cab, for so, sure. Yeah. They're nice. Pressurized cab, super quiet. You know what I mean? So what's the best machine? That, that, that that's hard. But but the G series, it is very hard to beat a G series. Because G series, look, we're what. 20 years into the G series already at 25 years. Cause they came out around 2000. See me in 25 years and let's see how many R series <laughs> are on the road. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean, so that, that right there. Is, yeah. Is, right. Yeah. Those piece of junk. I just know them yep. and yeah. they're really nice to run. So did I miss some? Like, I don't even know. Where I'm at. No, you know, you're good. It's all the way at the bottom. You're good. I'm okay. paying attention. Don't worry. It's right here. Do you guys know any Bobcat mechanic in Las Vegas, Nevada? Um, gosh, I don't know any. You're from I'm Las from Vegas. Las Vegas. <laughs> you don't know anybody. I didn't. I've never worked on Bobcats in Vegas. I can tell you that much. Gosh, I got a friend of mine about 45 minutes outside. I know he buys and sells a lot, but he's really good at working on them. Um, I'd have to ask him if he mind me giving his name out. I don't know if he wants to do that type of stuff, but other than that, I don't know anybody. I mean, we're only what six hours, right? Yeah, we're six hours from people, Vegas. So. People bring us equipment from all over. Um, we got a guy here from California that brought an engine up to us. He's here right now. So, yep. Um, but we get machines from Montana, California. Bay. We get machines brought to us. Bring it on. Bring it on up. Sorry to bother you again, but swash plate sensors, is there any way to test them to see if they're defective? Since you say they about never go out and want 900 bucks a piece. So while you got the engine up, swap it left to right and see if your codes go left to right. That's that's going to be the easiest way to check it. But if your codes stay, so let's say you swap the sensors, but your code stays on the right swatch plate or whichever one you were, you said it was. And then you have a harness or it's in the pump. Yeah. Then, then it's probably going to be in the pump. So, but let's say you're getting right codes. Then you take that sensor off and you put it on the left side. Now you're getting left codes and that would tell you it's your sensor. Okay. Ho hopefully that makes sense. That's what I would do. I'd swap them left to right before I bought one. 
Um, I need more help with the electrical diodes. Yeah, me too. And Kevin was talking about on Dan, it could be the detent. And I think he said the tilt. So the tilt wouldn't have a detent. That's what I thought at first. But um, if it was on the, the lift has the detent, but the tilt wouldn't have a detent. Well, that's what he said. It was the lift. Oh, he did say lift? I thought so. Okay, no, maybe. Well, Kevin, then you're spot on then. Well, that, then let's see. I would have said that. Oh, no, you're right. He said tilt. My bad. So, okay. yeah, tilt doesn't have the... Yeah, but I had to reread it. So, Kevin, that's actually a very good point that you brought up there um, because I thought that at first, too, and I was like, no, but he said tilt, so. Um, he says, I need more help with electrical diags. Mike can help you with that. Yeah, I, I'll make some videos. Um, good evening, fellas. Came on late. Eastern equipment. Glad Welcome back, here. man. Yeah, thanks for being on the rent as you go options. I would actually got I got a survey from Bobcat asking if I would stay with Bobcat brand if they did this. Wow, I'd love to see that survey. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know they were that that was something they were working on. Um, that that that's very interesting because a Weird. lot of people do complain about their machines completely loaded with all this options on demand is what they call it, but you have to pay to turn them on and it's what thousands of dollars per option if i remember right no, I, like, I, I know a guy who can turn them off <laughs> do you have do you have a video checking charge pressure no not particularly charge pressure on yes on the skid steer so we can yeah we can make one i need to do that so, some of these so the way i check charge pressure and the way i do direct pump release is not it's frowned upon by the safety guys <laughs> you got to know how to do it um maybe i'll do a video on it you know at your own risk type thing i do it with a ball valve if you don't have an expensive flow meter you know flow meters a good accurate flow meters a couple grand you know what i mean but I, I can do it with a pump and a ball valve um but you just got to make sure man if you use a ball valve to do a direct pump test basically you just start restricting flow on that and you could even use a flow control device but um, if you were to shut that off, something's going to give, something's going to blow, something's going to break. You have to be very careful doing it the way I do it. And I guess that's why I haven't done a video on it, because some people would freak out if they saw how I did it. But it's very, um, it's a very reliable and informative way. So maybe I'll do something on that, but I know I'll get, I'll get, well, feed, or I'll get bad feedback. I have to look at the schematic. I swear one of those ports is for charge. Oh, pressure. yeah. One of, yeah. You can just hook a gauge straight up to that. Yeah, it wouldn't be a direct pump test, but you'd be checking charge pressure. Yeah, but that kind of goes back to where we're talking about what is causing the charge pressure issue. Is it a leaking pump? Is it? So yeah, you can plug in a gauge and check charge pressure. Um, yeah, I guess yeah. If if you want to get down to the root of the problem, you need to do a direct pump. Test. Yeah, you have to check the charge pump itself. So you know what? Maybe let's just do a whole video from start to finish. Here's where you plug in your gauge. Here's where we start checking all these leak points and seeing where we're losing charge pressure. Thanks for thanks for um, uh, mentioning that. I I will put something together. Greg, I have 2018 S740 joystick machine ISO or uh, SJC sitting in the seat. Sounds like hydraulic system is deadheading. If I move the left joystick a very small amount, I can get it to stop. Um, so yeah, joystick machine. What? SJC, SJC. So it is SJC. Yeah, it's got to be SJC. I was gonna say manual. Then your pumps are out of adjustment. But oh, oh, maybe I don't know. Joystick it sounds like hydraulic system is, is dead. It, you mean SJC like joystick or like? Um, that's I think, yeah, I manual think, control. When I think of joystick, yeah. I think SJC. And, and it may be just a, but if he moves, just sitting a, in the seat sounds like yeah, like it's dead. So like when you unlock it. Um, what is that? I've heard that noise before. Yeah, let me know if that's manual or SJC on that, Greg. Gurkle. Eastern equipment loves them old Greg. machines too. I know. Gosh, but yeah, like I said, I wouldn't want to run them all day long every day. Have you ever had a G Series Bobcat not send voltage to the parking brake relay? My 873 isn't getting signal voltage to turn the parking brake on. The hour meter isn't counting hours as well. Yep, that, that's actually pretty common um, on those. Now, you're going to have to trace it all the way back to your controller. Um, hopefully, you got a pin out or a service manual because I don't remember the wire number on it. But sometimes what's happening is that, that signal voltage is coming. Let's see, which one are you getting? Signal voltage to turn the brake on. So are, you got a pull to or a hold. parking brake relay. It's to the parking brake relay. You remember we did a, um, a video on how those uh, pull hold 
oh to the to the actual relay to the relay okay so that you know well again so that is coming from the controller <coughs> so we have to go back to the controller and i pin out there um i back probe the pin uh with the wire number i'd have to look it up on the schematic and sometimes you only get like four volts out of that controller and it's an internal uh failure on the controller so if you've already tested and checked your wiring all the way back to the controller, more than likely it's going to be an internal failure. And that's not uncommon. I've got a stack of controllers back there that were all bad. It was either on the pull or the hold circuit. That could be either one. They both come from the controller. So right here we have 2019 T450 forward auxiliary circuit open. Forward auxiliary circuit open. Have you checked your auxiliary coils? Um, sometimes it's just as easy as a loose connection. So on top of the um, control valve, if you raise your cab, you'll see your control valve over there. You've got, you'll have a solenoid in the center of it, but then you're going to have um, two plug in solenoid looking things on top of the um, control valve. Um, I would check forward auxiliary circuit open. Like it's unplugged. Yeah, I, I always check the codes. Sometimes we get new machines that come right out of the factory. They're just not plugged in good. But we check that 2607 code. Let me just make sure I'm, I've got, I'm thinking of the right thing. Long ways from Vermont. Trucking companies come out this way all the time, Brian. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, front base solenoid open circuit. Yeah, front base open. So, yeah. Um, so, it's either going to be in the wiring. Um, you can, um, you can swap those solenoids from left to right to test if it's a solenoid you can't i don't think you got enough wiring to swap the wiring you'd have to make some pigtail adapters so if you swapped them left to right and see if the um the code changed that would tell you if it's a solenoid or if it's in the wiring um, and those aren't hard just a couple of screws you pull that auxiliary solenoid out swap them left to right and see if the code changes on that this one is tommy says on the t t320 fan shroud replacement does engine have to be removed to replace a cooling fan shroud? No. T320. No, but the um, the cooling package usually does because what happens is the bolt goes all the way through and they'll spin underneath the cooling package, the radiator, the hydraulic So if you're lucky, everything. you don't have to replace the cooling package or take the cooling package out? If you're lucky, yeah. But, um, but no, you don't have to pull the engine out to do that. Yeah. No. Any special tools you use often that you recommend for Bobcat? Multimeter. Multimeter. <laughs> yeah, for an R series, yeah, you need a multimeter, an amp clamp, a yeah, amp, amp DC amp clamp. Man, those are great for troubleshooting uh, parasitic loads. Um, On those R series machines. We're gonna do a. Um, a video on our favorite tools for working on Bobcat. I mean, a nine sixteenths wrench. A nine sixteenths <laughs> ratcheting wrench. Yeah. And a, and a half inch wrench. Uh. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're going to do a video on that. I, I can't think of all of them I off the top of my head, that. but I've got a bunch of like little special tools and stuff that I made to work on that. Man, yeah. I, uh, but thanks for reminding me. We'll write that one down too. That'll be another video that we do here at some point. Let's see. Are there any, oh, that is the, the video sounds like great. Dry fresh. That video sounds great. Okay. SJC. So yeah. Gurkha has SJC on his Greg as SJC. That's kind of weird. Um, that tells me that one of the pumps are not calibrated right. No. No, it's auxiliary. If it's well, I guess if no, he's talking about that one that he had. To, it's uh, deadheading. If I move yeah. the left joystick, it very, I can get it to stop. Oh, why is it deadheading? Because the parking brake is applied. Does it have creep? You would think it would have creep, but if the parking brake, man, I'm going to have to think on that one a little bit. Yeah, being SJC, I'm not sure, man. I'm going to have to think on that one. Yeah, the fuel systems on the old equipment, for sure, man. Them things will run on anything. You get a little bit of water in these new ones, and they're dead. D-E-D. -E -D. You just need to put water next to it, and they're dead. <laughs> a sniff of water. They're done. I sent my controller and big stash to IsoCell. They thought that my problem was in the big stash just over the phone. Do you know of a reason why the dash doesn't count the hours? The VIX 
dash, Tyson. So they thought my problem was in the big stash. Oh, the left dash. Uh, the left pedal. Well, the the <laughs> the hours come from the controller, so I'm not sure. I sent my. It's okay if it doesn't count hours. Are the hours not moving? You just don't see the hours in the screen, um, or oh, it just doesn't count the hours. That's okay. I guess that means your okay. machine. Then it means once you get a thousand more hours, it's the same. That's okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm trying to think where the G series it gets. It's what? What is it? I'm sorry, man. I'm... G series Bobcat. 873. Oh, an 873. Parking brake. The hour meter isn't counting hours as well. I'm going to look at the schematic on that. It seems like, like I know some of ours with the Kubota engines and all, they get the signal from, I think, the RPM sensor or something, but, oh, crap. Okay, I'm going to have to look back at that. Don't don't quote me. It's It's been a while. I'm, but, but the controller is ultimately responsible for the hours on that. So I wonder if there's a signal that's not controlling. I'm going to look into that a little bit because I can't remember where it's getting it on that Deutz. I mean, you sh should have an RPM sensor on that, but I'll have to check into that one. He says no creep. No creep. Greg says no creep. Okay. I want to think about that one. All right. Yeah, I see a Bobcat with an LS motor here. Yeah, we can do that. I we're going to put an LS in that... Uh, 763 over there. I would love to do that. It, they, they work really better with like the 743s when they went in line, but now the R series are in line. We can rip all that out and drop in an LS, but we'd have to talk to all the other controllers. So that might be difficult because Very the difficult. way they're the way they're so integrated. That's interesting. Yeah, I would, love, I would love to LS one. That would be awesome, man. Hours don't count. They do display. Left hand dash. Yep. Call the big stash. Yep. Left hand dash. Hours don't count. They do display. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Well, not necessarily. I, I mean, saw Y tracks on the M two hundred with this with the spacers. With the spacers. And how hard is it? I didn't it even know install? that existed. Yeah. So I mean, it depends on if you buy the Y track or not. It's just a spacer. But same same on thing. The track on, frame. Yeah. Same thing on the R series machines. So not all the R series machines came with wide track spacers, or they wouldn't fit wide track. But you can buy the spacer kit to put on there. I'm gonna be honest with you. I've never put a spacer kit on the MT, but I'm gonna look. I into bet that. you have to get longer hoses for the drive motors. I'm trying to think. I don't know. Let me look into that kit, um, and I, I will find out on that. Shoot me an email if you don't mind at some point. Let me know. All right, where are we at, Mike? That's it. We're man. all caught up, We're man. Caught up. Well, awesome. Well, thanks again, guys, for all the questions. Um, like I said, if anything that we need to go in more in depth with, we do schedule one-on-one uh, -on -one where we can do like a video chat and stuff like that and where we can actually see what you're doing and kind of hear what's going on. But I've got a, quite a few things written down here that I'm going to look into. And then so I'll make sure you guys, if he said that we're going to look into them, you can shoot them. You can do a consultation with them. You can get a lot more time one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, when we do our um, when we do our consultations, I know it kind of we did have to go up on price because we we're getting so many of them that I just couldn't keep up with them and and the amount of time that we're putting. It's not just I call you at whatever your time is. We actually pull the manuals, the schematics, you know, so we're fully prepared. We actually put more time into our consultations than what you see on just the call. You know, we, we try to be best prepared to uh, not waste any of your time as possible when we do those so we can get more in depth as far as that goes. So awesome. And yeah, we'll keep the videos coming, man. We really enjoy these live streams and the, the questions because you're putting us on the spot and that helps us even learn more. And uh, you get to watch Mike sit here like an idiot with no, smoke coming out of his no, ears. Oh, Mike, I couldn't do it without you, man. <laughs> You're the second best mechanic I know. Oh, geez. <laughs> but awesome. Well, thanks again, guys. Um, hopefully we'll see y'all next week. Peace. Nice.